Hi, welcome to another OptaPlanner example. This time we're going to look at exam timetabling. And we're also going to look at how the user can change the scoring parameters to focus on the things in the plan he finds or she finds most important. So um, let's take a look at the, the example first. In the exam timetabling problem, we are going to schedule exams into periods and into rooms. So the exams in this, uh, in this application are the colored buttons. So for example, over here we have one exam, the exam with ID 254. And here we have another exam, the yellow exam, and then the brown exam and so forth. And we are going to schedule um, these into uh, periods. So for example, we're going to schedule them on the 15th of April at 9.30 or, and, or maybe in the afternoon and 15th of April on 14 uh, o'clock or maybe another day and so forth, right? And we have, as you can see, we have a number of periods which we can select from, right? Um, and then um, also we're going to schedule them in rooms, which are on the top here. So we have uh, seven rooms, room zero to room six. And of course, each room has a capacity, which you can see here. So for example, this room is the largest room, room zero, which has a capacity of 260 students. And other rooms, for example, this one only has a capacity of 100 and so forth. And uh, the rectangle here shows the capacity. So the more white space in the rectangle, the more the higher the capacity of this room. Similarly, uh, each of the periods has a certain duration. Uh, in this case, they're all the same. They all have a duration of 210. Uh, but each of the exams also have a duration, as you can see. So for example, in, this, in the purple exam, it has a duration of 120. So you can see that uh, the oval is, uh, the circle is, is, is filled up to over half. And of course, we need to make sure that each exam, if an exam takes 120 minutes, that the period has at least 120 minutes. Now, because, of it, and because in this data set, they all have 210 uh, minutes, all the periods, we won't have any problems with that. Now, the second thing we need to worry about is, of course, that the student size uh, doesn't uh, is not bigger than the number of uh, seats in that uh, room. So, for example, this exam requires, uh, let's take a look, uh, 49 uh, uh, students, so 49 seats, and the room has uh, 260, which is fine, but there's another exam in the same room at the same time, uh, which also which requires 211 seats, so we have to uh, take the sum of those two, which is uh, 260, if I'm not mistaken, and which just fits into that room perfectly, so that, that's fine, and we're not going over capacity. And as you can see in all the other examples, we make sure that the, the sum of the exams, uh, the students or the number of students of the exams um, is less than the capacity of, of that room, right? So, um, yeah, and we can schedule multiple exams in the same room. So sometimes you schedule only one exam, like here uh, in the room at that time. Sometimes you schedule two, like in this case, but sometimes you can actually schedule far more. So like in this case, we're scheduling a lot of exams, about six at the same time in the same room. Uh, but you can also see that most of them are actually small, sometimes even just a few students, a handful of students, sometimes even just five students. Uh, that's fine. As long as there are, as there are enough seats in the room, um, that's okay. Okay, now what do we want to optimize? We want to optimize a number of things. Um, so, of course, like I've just told you, we had a number of hard constraints, or the capacity and so forth. Um, there are a couple more. Um, some exams need to be scheduled at the same time as another exam. Um, sometimes an exam should not be scheduled at the same time as another exam. And sometimes one exam needs to schedule before another exam happens. So for example, if you have uh, a math exam in theory and one in practice, uh, the theory math exam should be scheduled before the, the uh, practice math exam, for example, that could happen. So we can configure all those hard constraints and, and of course, up the planner, um, um, takes those into account, right? And uh, actually the example of the planner example here take the, those into account, right? Okay, now there are also a number of soft constraints and um, one of the soft constraints is that we should not have mixed duration. So what's a mixed duration? Well, here, for example, in this case, we have a mixed duration. The purple exam takes 120 minutes, but the uh, brown exam takes 180 minutes. So that means that after about two hours into the exam, um, almost a lot of uh, students in the, the room will basically stand up and leave uh, the room. This is very dis disruptive for the other students, uh, which are taking the orange, uh, the brown exam. 
and um, because uh, yeah, because everybody's leaving the room at some point, right? And um, to avoid this, we don't want to have this situation. We really want to have a situation where uh, if multiple exams are in the same uh, room at the same time, that they at least take the, the same amount of time. So for example, uh, in, in this case, we already have this, the yellow and the purple exam, they take the same amount of time. So there's no problem there, but this is actually a problem. And if we actually go looking, uh, we look at the constraint matches. So an explanation is why we have a certain score and currently you have the score of minus 6,500. This will explain us how good or bad this, this, um, this plan is, right? So if we look into this, one of the constraints is about mixed durations. There are a few, a few others which I haven't explained yet. And we see that uh, it's, there are actually 65 occurrences of those. And for a total of, uh, we lose about 650 points on that. And one of them is this first one. So I believe um, probably this one will be the first one. Uh, no, it's not, they're no, not ordered um, uh, by period. But uh, anyway, it's definitely in here. Okay. Now, um, there are a number of other constraints, right? Uh, let's take a look what the other constraints are. Uh, room penalty. Certain rooms should not be used at a certain time. If we do use them, we're going to lose points on them. Uh, apparently, we use quite a lot of points on, on a few of those, uh, up to 1,450 points. Uh, another one is period spread, uh, where we really want to spread the um, uh, exams as much as possible so that uh, the student uh, which is doing multiple exams uh, so uh, some exams share students, right? So, for example, the purple exam might share students with the with uh, with this brown exam and so forth. Uh, if they share students, then these the exams should be as far as part uh, apart as possible, of course. Um, but of course, one student will have up to 20, 30 exams in in, in one uh, exam period. So. Um, there's, there's a limit and then uh, we mean we want to spread them as evenly as possible. But we don't want to have a case where a student has uh, two exams really short up to each other. And when they're really short uh, after each other, then two exams are actually in a row. And that's, a, that's even uh, a lot worse because um, if we have that, we lose a lot of points just for having one instance of this. So two exams on the same day in a row, that's just uh, a killer for some of the students. And we don't want to have that. Um, and there's a number of other constraints. Um, yeah, like I said, room penalty and of course front load. So what's front load? Well, the teachers, they have to have the time to uh, grade the exams. Um, and that's why they want to have um, the most, the exams with the most students uh, in the front of the schedule so that um, a lot of the exams are well already done by half of the schedule. So they have time to uh, correct those exams and to uh, grade those exams. Um, that's why we want to have the, the ones, and, and we actually see those in here, the ones with, with a lot of students, so those with a lot of gray in, in the rectangle, we want to have them at the beginning. So this is good, this is one that's in the beginning, but you'll actually, in this case, you'll find some in the, in the end here, as you can see, right? Okay, now let's see what happens if we uh, optimize this with Planner, uh, because this is just an initial solution. We'll see that if we give it some time, the score will improve. And you will see that some of the exams are, are being moved as a result of that. So um, uh, this, this gives us a better schedule where the students are happier because uh, the exams are more spread, uh, more spread more evenly. And also the teachers are happier because they um, the, the, the exams which uh, take a lot of grade, where a lot of students are participating in are earlier in the schedule. Now, as a user, you might say, okay, but I still have a lot of uh, soft constraints broken here and that will never get to zero. So there might be a point when you say, I have to make choices. Uh, I have to make a choice between the welfare of the student and the welfare of the teacher. And depending on the institution, you might, uh, and of course, uh, the realistic constraints of the teachers and the students there, you might want to plan this differently than the default settings, right? Because by default, all of these constraints have some weight against each other. And you might say mm, this constraint or that constraint is more important to me than the others. So let's take a look at uh, what happens if we do that. So I'm going to stop uh, this for a minute, all right? And notice that we still have this mixed duration over here, right? Let's suppose I really, really want to get rid of those mixed duration. Let's suppose, um, 
Um, I'm happy to, to lose, uh, uh, to have so, some exams which are big at the end for that, or to have some students uh, have some more exams in the same period, as long as we don't have these mixed duration, because that's just really, really disruptive for the students. So let's take a look at the scoring parameters. These are the scoring parameters. This means that every time we have two exams in a row, we will lose seven points. Uh, per student, even I, if I recall correctly, and then two exams in the and in, in a day. So every time a student has two exams on the same day, we will lose five points per student. And then um, the number of other things like the period spread penalty. So the period spread length means that we want to have uh, five days uh, of uh, between two exams, and the period spread penalty is very low, as you can see, just one. Um, if that happens, we're going to lose that one point. So uh, we're really, really going to avoid two exams in the same day. But um, two exams, for example, in three or four days will only just cost us one point. So um, that's that's relatively okay. Um, now here you can see the examples of mixed duration penalty, right? So if you have the rigs mixed duration on 10, then um, then we lose quite a few points 10, but it's apparently not that much because we still have instances of that, right? So let's let's be unreasonable and let's uh, hide that a little bit to 1000. Let's take a look at the score also here at the bottom, what will happen there. You will see that the score immediately blows up because uh, to 64,000. The reason for that is of course these mixed durations, we have 59 of them and they are costing us a lot of points right now because they cost a thousand points per, and not 10 points per instance. Now, if we optimize now, you will see that um, as it starts optimizing, that OptoPlanner will take a look at those mixed durations and will uh, definitely break those. So um, here we have one. You can see that the score is going down. He's he's definitely fixing mixed durations. Uh, he should be fixing this one soon too. Uh, you can see here are a couple. No, those are not mixed durations. Mm. And let's give it some time. But you can see he's basically throwing out all the mixed durations. Uh, now, okay, now, so this one's gone too. And he's, uh, of course, by moving those mixed duration, he's probably violating a few of the other soft constraints. Um, but as we said, we find it as a user far more important, important to have no mixed durations, right? Um, so this is, this is one nice thing you can do if you're implementing a project with uh, OptoPlanner, is that you can allow your users to change the scoring parameters. So you might have uh, a multi-tenancy setup where you say, okay, uh, we have one for this uh, school uh, setup and we use the same application for another uh, um, and same web application for another uh, school or for multiple schools. Now each school can is basically a tenant in, in your system, but you can say that per school they can decide what they find more important. So you can basically save per tenant what are their scoring parameters, uh, which of the rules uh, uh, should apply and how much they, they should weigh. So you can actually use the scoring parameters to disable rules. So for example, let's say I don't care about uh, mixed durations, I can do that too. So I can do, for example, I can set the mixed durations to zero, all right? And then when you solve this, you will see that it will likely introduce uh, mixed durations because in, in trying to solve the other soft constraints, it's, yeah, as you can see here, introducing lots and lots of uh, mixed durations. Um, okay. So I hope you find found this interesting. And if you want to know more about OptoPlanner, uh, just go to the OptoPlanner.org uh, website. Um, so OptoPlanner is a, a lightweight uh, embeddable planning engine uh, for Java. And uh, you can use it in, in, in a Swing application like this, but of course you can use it in a web application too, uh, or any other plain old Java application really. Um, this is just one of the examples which uses uh, Java Swing to, sh to show the example. So thanks for watching. Bye.